Hello! My birthday was September 2nd, so to celebrate, I've decided to upload episodes from my mindfulness podcast series, Reading with Carrie, every day through the month of September. Once we hit October, I'll be posting the episodes every Friday with the bonus minisodes on Saturday. To catch the episodes as they air every Wednesday, you can subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click the link in the description below to go directly to my podcast's website. Hope you enjoy! Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Fable, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. I think today's story, Kuzman the Fox, is a little less known, but it's still quite entertaining. I don't have any house cleaning for today, but I hope you've been enjoying these episodes. I would love to hear your feedback and thoughts. You can always email me at readingwithcarrie at gmail.com, and please rate this podcast on whichever listening platform you're using. This is the mindful emotional state of love. Close your eyes, and we are again going to focus on our breathing first. We always focus on the breath first. Inhale in, two, three, four. Hold it for a moment and exhale, two, three, four. Just breathe deeply without forcing it. Deeply in, pause, and out, pause. We're going to do this a couple of times just focusing on our breath. You can even say the words breathing in, hold, breathing out, focus on the moment and feel any sensation you might have in your body. Go over your body, check every piece for any sensations. Is your body trying to communicate anything with you? Are you holding tension in your shoulders? Are your feet tired from a long day? Just focus. And if you're feeling completely fine, maybe put your thumb and a finger together and Just feel what that sensation is as you do small, gentle circles. Where are your hands resting? Sink deeper into whatever you're leaning on. The bed, a chair, the floor. Just relax with deep inhales in and a nice deep exhale. Is any body part tingling? Do you have a slightly cold body part? Maybe something's warm? If that sensation disappears, move on and find another sensation. The pressure on your legs, or the way your hands are resting. Just be in this moment, in the here and now. And as you sit here, where does the emotion of love come from? To receive it, you must give it. So where do you give love from? Focus on giving love. Think about who you give love to. It might be a friend, a family member, a pet. This person or pet or thing might be close to you physically, or they might be far away. Truly send out your love right now to feel the sensation of love. And now hold on to that sensation of love and let it circulate and let it flow out as love takes over you. Give your love 
sending out love to who you choose and as such feel the love overcome you truly and deeply the sensation of love wash over your whole body sending out the love and feeling the love warm your spirit warm your chest it's like a nice gentle hug and now open your eyes slowly and allow this feeling to radiate through you in this moment just be and live and feel love let it spread out of your body as you sit in the moment of love great job you finished this exercise and as always you know it I love to give a nice deep relaxing sigh so just hug on to that feeling of love let it burn gently in your heart as you inhale and sigh and now here's today's story Kuzma and the Fox a Japanese folktale a farmer and his wife had a son named Kuzma. He was a good boy, but lazy. He just wouldn't work. One day, his mother said, That boy is useless. Maybe he'd be happier if he lived alone. His father agreed. He made Kuzma a cabin in the woods. He gave him an old horse, five chickens, and a scraggly rooster. There Kuzma lived, all by himself in the woods. A fox came by one day and smelled the chickens. When Kuzma went hunting, the fox sneaked into the cabin. She gobbled up a chicken and ran off. When Kuzma got back, he missed the chicken and wondered who had taken it. The next day, he went hunting again. He met the fox. Smiling sweetly, she said, Going hunting, Kuzma? Yes, I am, said Kuzma. Have fun, grinned the fox. When he'd gone, she ran into the cabin. She gobbled up another chicken and fled. Kuzma came home and saw that he had lost another chicken. Can Fox be the chicken thief? He wondered. The next day, he locked his doors and windows before he went hunting. He met the fox again. Smiling sweetly, she said, Going hunting, Kuzma? Yes, I am, said Kuzma. Have fun, grinned the fox. She ran into the cabin and tried to get in, but the doors and windows were locked. I'll slip down the chimney, she thought, and down the chimney she went. Kuzma was hiding nearby and had seen everything. He knew the fox couldn't leap up out of the chimney. Now I've got you, he cried through the keyhole. Your game is up, you thief. Please, good, kind Kuzma, don't kill me, cried the fox. If you spare my life, I'll make your fortune. You'll never have to work again. All you have to do is pay me in advance for my help. Cook me one of your chickens in good fresh butter. Kuzma thought for a moment. Then he said, well, why not? He fried a chicken and fed it to the fox. She gobbled it up. Then she said, Beyond this forest lies the kingdom of King Thunderboom and Queen Lightning Zip. Their daughter is the world's best princess. She's beautiful, she's rich, and she's going to be your wife. What? No princess would marry me, said Kuzma. You'll see, said the fox. I give you my word. The fox ran straight to King Thunderboom's palace. She went in and bowed low. Greetings, wise King Thunderboom. Greetings, fair Queen Lightning Zip, said the fox. Greetings, little fox, said the king. What do you want? Simply this, said the fox. I have come to arrange a marriage. You have a fine girl, and I can get her a good husband. Why didn't he come himself? Is something wrong with him? Asked the king, amazed at the boldness of fox. He can't leave home just now, said the fox. He is much too busy. He rules all the wild animals and has to keep an eye on them. A ruler of animals is a strange kind of a son-in-law, said the king. But let him send me forty times forty wolves. Then I'll consider him as a husband for my daughter. Fox went to the timberland at the edge of the woods. She began to stagger and sing and hiccup, as if she had eaten too much. Presently, a wolf saw her and said, What a dinner you must have had! Yes, said the fox. I ate much too much at the king's animal banquet. Why weren't you there? 
You never saw so much fine food and so many animals eating it. I love parties, said the wolf hopefully. How about taking me there? All right, said the fox. But the king's cook won't cook just one supper. He cooks only for crowds. Tomorrow at noon, bring 40 times 40 wolves here to me. We'll go to the palace together. What a feast we'll have. The next day, a great band of wolves assembled in the forest. Fox led them to the king, lined up in rows of 40. Noble king, she said, here are the wolves. Count them. Your future son-in-law sends them to you with his respects. Thank you, said the greedy king. Put them away in my stockyard. I see my future son-in-law has his first-class fur animals. Why doesn't he send me as many bears? Thereupon Fox ran to Kuzma's cabin and said, I'm hungry. In order to succeed, I must look well-fed. Fry me another chicken and fresh butter, please. When Fox had gobbled Kuzma's chicken, she ran to the king's side of the woods. She sang and staggered and hiccuped as before. And before long, a bear came up and said, You look fat and well-fed. Where have you been? I've just left the king's animal banquet, said the fox, licking her chops. What a feast! It's still going on. It is, said the bear hopefully. Can bears go too? With me they can, said fox. But the king's cook cooks only for crowds. Meet me tomorrow with forty times forty more bears. I'll lead the way to a real feast. The next day the bears were waiting. Fox led them to the palace and lined them up outside in rows of forty. Then she went in and said, King, the bears are outside, with your son-in-law's respects. The bears are put into the stockyard. Bears and wolves are very good, said the king. Now, how about some nice mink? Let him send me forty times forty mink, and I'll announce the engagement right away. Fox ran to Kuzma's cabin. You'll have to feed me again, she said. I can't look skinny if I'm to make your fortune. Kuzma fed her the last chicken and the scraggly rooster as well. Then Fox ran to the river on the king's side of the woods. She staggered and sang and hiccuped as before. And before long, a mink came up and said, You look as if you've had too much to eat. Indeed I have, said the fox. I'm so full of trout I can hardly walk. Trout, said the mink. They're hard to get just now. Not at the king's banquet, said the fox. The wolves and bears and everybody are gobbling trout by the ton. Why wasn't I invited? asked the mink. It's not too late, said the fox. Come and celebrate the engagement of the king's daughter. Meet me tomorrow, with forty times forty more mink. We'll go to the feast together. The next day, the king was richer by forty times forty mink. When they were safely in the stockyard, the king said, Tell the young man to come tomorrow. The engagement is official. He's invited to dinner. The next day, fox, looking busy and important, said to the king, My master begs to be excused. He couldn't come today. Why not? asked the king. He wants to give you half his gold. He's getting it ready, but he has nothing big enough to measure it with. He wants you to lend him a dozen bushel baskets, so the work will go faster. Baskets? gasped the king. <laughs> yes, I'll lend him the baskets. He was tremendously impressed by anyone with gold enough to measure by the basket. Next day, Fox ran again to the palace. She said, King, your son-in-law will arrive today. He's decided to bring all his gold. Then you may take whatever you want of it. The delighted king arranged a big reception. Fox ran to Kuzma's cabin. This is it, she cried. You're going to marry the daughter of King Thunderboom and Queen Lightning Zip. Hurry up and get ready. Are you sure you're not crazy? said Kuzma. How can I visit a king? I don't even own a good suit. Forget that said the fox. Saddle up your old nag and bring along a saw. Leave the rest to me. Kuzma obeyed. He trotted behind the fox until they came to the bridge over the river near the king's palace. See the pillars that hold up the bridge? Fox asked. Go and saw them almost through. Kuzma sawed away. Soon the beams cracked and the bridge crashed into the river. Now, said fox, undress. Send your horse home. Let the river wash away your clothes. Stay in the water till you're blue with cold. Then climb onto that rock out there in midstream and wait for me. It's the last work you'll ever have to do, I promise. Kuzma scratched his head, but he obeyed. Fox ran to the palace screaming, Sire! Good king! Help! Horror! What a tragedy! All is lost! He's drowned! What's the matter? cried the king. 
You know the bridge that leads onto your kingdom? It's gone! It fell into bits under the weight of your son-in-law's gold. He fell into the water. Gold, horses, servants, himself, all are lost, panted the fox. The king was horrified and ashamed that his bridge had caused such trouble. He sent servants with piles of dry clothing to look for his son-in-law. The servants found Kuzma shivering on the rock. They got him ashore, rubbed him warm, and dressed him in royal garments. When the king saw Kuzma, tall, handsome, well-dressed, and still alive, he welcomed him warmly. He apologized for having failed to make a special bridge strong enough to carry gold, horses, and many servants. Graciously, Kuzma forgave him. Bells rang, cannons sounded a salute, everyone cheered, and Kuzma married the king's daughter. From then on, Kuzma lived gaily with his delightful wife in his father-in-law's delightful palace. Fox came to court to stay. Kuzma fed her chicken, fried in fresh butter, until the end of her days. The End The story is so fun, isn't it? A talking fox outsmarts a king and other animals, all while a lazy dude gets the reward. It's hard to really see the moral of the story. Perhaps some stories don't have a lesson to learn. But I would say that while Kuzma is not someone to admire, the fox is admirable. Sometimes we do have to think outside the box for a solution, and other times we find that we can help ourselves by helping others. I think our closing thoughts are said by Zen master Linji. What I point out to you is only that you shouldn't allow yourselves to be confused by others. Act when you need to, without further hesitation or doubt. People today can't do this. What is their affliction? Their affliction is their lack of self-confidence. If you do not spontaneously trust yourself sufficiently, you will be in a frantic state, pursuing all sorts of objects and being changed by those objects, unable to be independent. To me, I think this works well with the story because the fox trusted her own instinct without hesitation. She realized what Kuzma wanted and she acted. She first did what she needed to to survive, convince him to feed her in advance. But she also thought ahead as well. Kuzma, in his own way, is practicing non-judgment. Although he is lazy and really didn't do much to better his status, he's also free from worry on how things will play out. So perhaps we can learn a bit from him after all. Thank you for listening. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story. Title, Guzma and the Fox. Author, unknown. Accredited as a Japanese folktale and also as Guzma Skorobogadi folktale. However, no author has been stated. Version, The Golden Book of Fairy Tales. Translated by Marie Ponsot and illustrated by Adrienne Segur.